Welcome to our lecture online. So what do we do if we have a conducting path that splits up into two conducting paths and we're trying to find how much heat flows across and we're trying to find out what the junction temperature is, the temperature at which the one conducting path splits up into two conducting paths. Now, the first conducting path is made out of copper. It has a cross-sectional area of two square centimeters. By the way, all of them do. They all have a, the same cross-sectional area, which makes it a little bit easier. The second conducting pad up here has a length of 13 centimeters made out of brass. And the third conducting pad here is 12 centimeters long. It's made out of steel. So we have copper, brass, and steel that have three different constants of conductivities. The general equation is going to be dq dt is equal to ka delta t over l. So how do we calculate the heat going across and in this case how do we find the junction temperature of that location right there? Well what we have to realize is that the amount of heat flowing through this path must equal the sum of the heat flowing through the other two paths. So what we can say is that if we label the paths one two and three, that makes it a little bit easier. We could then say that the dq dt of path number one must equal the sum of the dq dt's of the other two paths, two and three, like that. And then we can plug in what they are equal to. So in the first case, dq dt can be written as this, is going to be k1 a, they're all the same a, times delta t divided by the length of that path, so we'll call that length 1, plus, is equal to, and here that's going to be a sum, it's going to be K2A times delta T divided by L2 plus K3A delta T divided by L3. And right away we realize since the areas are the same for all three, the area cancels out on both sides. So now when we reproduce the equation up here, we can then say on the first, on the left side, we end up with K1 times the difference in the temperature. Now that will be 100 minus the junction temperature that we're looking for. So we'll write this as 100 minus T sub J for the junction temperature divided by the length of that, which happens to be 46 centimeters. And yes, we can use centimeters instead of meters because they will cancel out across the board on both sides of the equation. And so this is equal to the sum of the two on the right side, so that would be K2, times the temperature of the junction, because here we have the junction temperature minus zero, which simply gives us the junction temperature, divided by the length, in this case would be 13, plus K3 times the junction temperature divided by 12. And again, we can use centimeters, centimeters, because the units would cancel out on both sides of the equation. Next, well, I think what we want to do is somehow isolate the junction temperature by multiplying this through and moving it to the other side. So we have 100 K1 over 46 is equal to, when we multiply this, that becomes negative, move the other side becomes positive, so it becomes K1 Tj divided by 46 plus K2 Tj divided by 13 plus K3 Tj divided by 12. And right away you can see that we can factor out a Tj on the right side. So this becomes 100 K1 over 46 is equal to Tj times K1 over 46 plus K2 over 13 plus K3 over 12. And then if we want to solve for this, we can say that Tj is equal to, on, the, on this side, we have 100 K1 over 46, and the whole thing divided by this quantity right here, which is K1 over 46 plus K2 over 13 plus K3 over 12. And I think now we're ready to plug in what those values are equal to. So we have the junction temperature is equal to 100 times K1, which is 385, divided by 46, and take the whole thing and divide by the quantity, K1, which is 385, divided by 46, plus K2, which is 109, 
divided by 13 plus the third one is 50.2 divided by 12. And now we're ready to come up with a number. And hopefully whatever we get is between 100 and 0, or we made definitely a mistake somewhere. So first let's work the denominator. 385 divided by 46 plus 109 divided by 13 plus 50.2 divided by 12. We take the inverse of that, multiply the times 100, times 385, and divide by 46. And I get a temperature of 40 degrees centigrade. So that means that the drop in path 1 from here to here is from 100 down to 40, and now from there to there is 40, from there to, uh, from 40 to 0, taking the two paths 2 and 3. And that's how we figured out the junction temperature.